Hello everyone, welcome back to this Nomad Sculpts tutorial. In the last video I showed you how you can use the basic layout of uh, this app, Nomad Sculpt, and we're now going to continue to sculpt into this. I'm going to sculpt the uh, skull within the software. So let's get started. So as soon as we start, we can just do a file new if you've got something else within the scene. So file new, create new scene. I'm going to import a new image. So I've got this reference image loaded. Um, you can have a look at your own references online. All you've got to do is press this tick here and it might show up blank. So you need to press the plus icon and then you can uh, go into your images and then load your new image. And we can move the position of that image through the X axis, through the Y axis, and also the rotation, which I'll keep at zero and we can increase and decrease the scale. So I'm just going to move this into place and I'm going to try and get this side view in the center here like so. And then you can just use your fingers to pinch and move this around if you need to. I might just bring this down just a little bit. Let's bring this one down. There we go. And then we can again pinch and zoom in on our object. And we're just going to get to the center here. Right, so I'm going to use the move tool and I've got the move tool set fairly large and I'm going to just decrease the intensity here just so I'm not pulling out too much of this object. So here we've got it set to front. We're going to need to turn this over so I'm just going to undo that and turn this to the left and then again move this in place and start moving across this grid. So just use your fingers to move it in place and then use your pencil or um, stylus, whatever you're using on your tablet. And let's bring this down. Try and make it a little bit bigger. What we can also do is we can go into this multi resolution. And if I turn my wireframe on at the bottom here, I can actually decrease the resolution. And that's going to make it a little bit easier just to move these forms around. So let's just make that brush a little bit smaller, pull this out. And once you've got it in place in the side view, once you move to something like the front view or the top view, you'll notice that it's totally out of place. So let's just move this into this top view. And then again, use that move tool and try and move this in place. And let's stretch this one out. And you'll need to basically go backwards and forwards to your reference and go from the top view to the side view and just move this in place. Right, let's just continue to move this down. Like so, I might just use the smoothing tool just to bring this back in and then back to the move tool to pull this down. Like so. And then again, back to the top view. That looks pretty good. I might just pull this section out like so. Back to that left view. And that's looking pretty good. I might just bring this in just a little bit more. It's up to you how precise you want to get this. I'm just trying to line it up with the image underneath. Right, so now let's go to our front view and I'm just going to go back into my image here and just move this across the X axis just to get into the center. There we go. And then I'm going to scale this in place. And we can also go on this little sun icon. If you go all the way down to the bottom, we've got the material opacity and we can lower that and see what's underneath. It's going to make it a lot easier for us to um, move this in place. So let's get this and about the right size. And then again, just using that move tool, I can push and pull this geometry. Okay, something like that. I'll then need to work on the eye socket, which I'm gonna do later. Let's pull this one out. And 
again just in case I'm going to go up to the top here go to the opacity bring it back up and then I'm going to go back into my reference and move this over to the side I can see that looks totally different to the side view so let's change that again So I'm just going to go here and just increase this resolution and again just move this in place try and get it in the right spot go back to that move tool move this around and it's just a matter of just going backwards and forwards to your reference and then you can start adding your details once you've got everything in line So here I'm just eyeballing based on the reference. I'm not going back into that reference. I've just got my model to the side and I'm just stretching this out just to see what it looks like first. And then I can move it over to my model and get it a lot more precise. So let's move this out. I'm just going to move that, there we go, turn the opacity down, we can actually see what's underneath, so let's get this even closer to our model. Turn the opacity back up and let's have a look at that. Okay. So now let's voxelize this. I'm going to go up here and then remesh this. I'm going to set this to just over 200. Remesh. I can turn the voxels off and then I'm going to go to smooth and just smooth all this out. There we go. So 
So for this cheekbone here, I'm going to use the drag tool and I'm going to drag this section out and just make sure it's in line. There we go. And then I'm going to drag this one. Let's try and make them meet. It's going to look messy, but we just basically trying to make these two touch. There we go. And then let's revoxel it. So I can press the voxel icon right at the bottom left hand corner here or right, depending on which side you've got this on. And then I'm going to go down to the inflate and inflate this. And then I'm going to voxel again. And then I can go on to smooth and just smooth this out. Yes, yeah, so any of those areas that are really um, skinny, we can just go into inflate and then just inflate that again. Voxel, inflate and voxel again. So let's go back to that top view. This is looking pretty crazy now. So let's go back to our move tool and let's move this in place. smooth this out a little there we go and let's just go back to that inflate and just inflate this section and then back to the move tool and I'm just gonna again just eyeball this just to see what this looks like and keep pushing and pulling like so So you'll notice I just push from the front and then the back and then just keep going just to create that little lip there and create that little bevel. So kind of take your time with this. There's no need to rush. So let's stretch this one out up to near the eye. Let's do this back to the front view. Let's zoom this in. And then let's go back to that little sun icon, turn the opacity down. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe not that low. There we go. And I can go back to my move tool. And then just line this up. Okay, let's turn that opacity back up. There we go, it's starting to take shape now. And let's go back to this top view. Let's go to the back view and see what this looks like. It's not too far off.
Right, so let's do the bottom now. Let's go back into my reference and just move this over and then I can flip this around like so. You can just use one finger just to flip it and can press bottom again just to center this and then see what that looks like. It's actually pretty close. Let's just lower the opacity just so I can see what's going on underneath and then just use this move tool and try and get it in place. Okay, let's take a look at that. Let's turn the opacity back up and let's go back to my reference and move this over to the side. And now let's focus on this nose area here. So I'm just going to use the mask. Go where are we mask, 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 mask. There we go. And then I can just start painting in the center like so. I'm then going to select my mask up here in the settings. I'm going to invert it and then I'm going to use the move tool and just move this backwards. Okay, that looks good. And then I can go back onto uh, a different tool or let's go back to the uh, where we mask. There we go. And then I can clear I'm going to revox all this, select smooth, and then just smooth out that edge. Like so. And then I can go into the clay tool and I can start sculpting into this slightly. So let's just make this brow line a little bit more defined. I'm then going to press the subtract and then just start to subtract into this. I'm just going to flick between the smooth and subtract. Just in that brow line, I might just use the pinch and just pinch this together slightly. There we go. Back up to brush. And let's just start sculpting in some of these details. That is a little bit too much. Let's go back to clay. So here I'm just using the flatten tool and I'm going to flatten just underneath here just to make it look a little bit more hard surface. It's looking kind of organic at the moment. So I want some more harder edges. So I'm just going to do that with the flatten tool. And let's see what that looks like. That's looking pretty good. That's a little bit more defined now. Let's just flatten 
this inside edge as well, like so. That looks pretty good. And maybe this inside here, that's a bit better. So you might need to play around with the intensity here. If it's doing it uh, too much, then just turn the intensity down. That's looking pretty good like that. And I might just do a little bit on the top here. And let's change the color here. I'm just going to make this just a little bit brighter. And what background do we have this set to? Let's just go and take a look at that. Let's just turn that setting off. Let's have a look at different environments. That looks a little bit better. I think I can see it a little bit more. Let's flick through them all. Um, I quite like this one. Let's go ahead with this one. Right, back to that flatten brush and I'm just going to flatten underneath here. So let's go back to that bottom and then flip this around, go back to my reference image and let's just move this to the side. And let's have a look at that side reference. So there's actually a giant hole in the back here. So let's use that mask again and just mask off this area like so. Select the icon, invert and then use that move tool and then just pull this back in. I can then go back to my mask select the settings and clear the mask. I then voxel down the bottom here, or you can go up here and then press remesh. And I'm going to smooth that section out. Okay. And we could do the same thing. Let's go back into the mask and let's just mask off this section here. Keeps asking me to save. Ideally you should definitely save at this stage. It's kind of silly of me to press cancel all the time, but um, I'm taking my chances. Right, let's do that. Let's maybe do the center section here. And then we can actually see that this whole area here um, is kind of pulled in. So we'll get to that shortly. I'm just going to invert this mask again. I'm going to go back into that move tool and I'm going to try and get back to a side view and then I'm just going to push this up. And then going to go back into the mask, clear the mask, revoxel again, go back to smooth, same process, just smooth that out. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to the move tool and I'm just going to push this in like so. So if you need to drag out small details, just use the drag tool instead of the move tool. Move tool is great for, for large changes. And drag tool is really good for small changes. There we go. So 
So I'm just going to go back into that clay brush and just start to build this section here. Just start to build out and away from the model. And then revoxel back to smooth and just smooth that out. And I might actually go back to that flatten and just flatten underneath here. And let's use the drag tool. I'm not going to mask this off this time. I'm just going to use the drag tool, make it nice and small, and then just drag this in. Does that work? No, actually, should definitely use the mask. If it works, definitely use it. Right, there we go. Mask that off. Let's invert that. And then let's, let's try something else. Let's actually use the gizmo here, and I can just pull this in or out. Uh, I could even scale this instead. So if I scale this inwards, it's going to scale on both sides uniformly. So let's do that. Let's go back to the mask and then clear. And now I can revoxel. And at this stage, let's just voxel at a slightly higher mesh and then go back to smooth and smooth this out. Now oh, here I might just need to turn the symmetry off just so I can get a straight line here and just sculpt into this. So what you can do is you can sculpt a much deeper thick line like so. Let's just see how much that's cut into it. It's quite a lot. Let's just cut into it even more. In fact, let's go back to the brush and make that really small and increase the intensity. There we go. Let's just set that to subtract. That's the one. Okay, so it's quite severe there, but that's fine because we're then going to go into plus instead of subtract and then increase on the outside. Increase on the outside again. Or at least I do this in ZBrush. I don't know what results it's going to have in the software, but let's have a look. But if you cut into the center and then you extrude on the outside, ideally you should be able to use something like pinch and just pinch this together and create a nice smooth line here, like so. There we go. Let's have a look at that. There we go. It works. Brilliant. So let's go back up to clay and then Let's just slowly start adding in some details. Let's turn the subtract off. Right, so I'm aware of time here. I don't want this to go on too long. So I'm going to get to the final stage where I'm just going to add the teeth and then I'm going to uh, add some post-processing effects. Uh, let's just go back into drag and just drag this a little bit more underneath. Like so. Okay, and I just want to go back to 
my reference, move this over, and I want to see that front view. Let's see what that's looking like. Okay, so this section here needs to be smoothed out. This whole section right here. So let's make that smooth. It should just kind of blend into one. Go back to move. That's more like it. And then smooth that one out. Okay, excellent. Let's just quickly do these teeth. I'm just going to use the same process I used before. I'm going to use the move tool. And let's just make this brush nice and small. And where are the teeth? We've got one. Ooh, where are we? Not move. Mask. There we go. Uh, before I do that, let's add the symmetry again. Enable symmetry. Right, so we've got one right at the front and then we've got three at the back here. So let's add that one, two, three. There we go. I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to invert that. I'm then going to go down to my gizmo and I'm just going to pull this down like so. I'm actually going to make it the size was that front fang there and then I'm going to go back up to my mask and then clear that mask I'm going to revoxel and then I'm going to press the smooth and I'm just going to smooth these back teeth out like so I can then use something like the drag and just drag these back in that smooth is just going to create a little point here where I can go back into that drag and just kind of drag these backwards and forwards just to make a bit more of a point. So you see going backwards and forwards on the inside and outside makes them a lot thinner. I can just move them in place. Okay, brilliant. I think I'll leave it there. I don't need to add uh, too much detail, at least for this video. By all means, spend all of your time adding loads of little details. You can always go up to this section and you can add a new layer. So once you've got so far and you feel like you've got the block in made, now you want to start adding all in all of those little cracks and details, then you can select add new layer. And now anything that you add directly on top of this will just be on a layer. So I can go back into my layers and I can press the eye icon and turn it on and off. And yeah, you just keep going backwards and forwards between those layers. You can create multiple layers. So say one layer is going to be for all of the cracks within the skull. And then the other one's going to be for any kind of sculpted details that you were going to add. And you can do it that way. But yeah, definitely utilize those layers once you start adding more details. Okay, so we'll leave it there. Let's just go back into the post-processing and let's have a look at some of these effects. So let's go into reflection. We don't need that. Ambient occlusion. We can turn that on. We can turn on. Let's have a look at depth of field. I don't think we need depth of field turned on, but we can turn on the near blur and just kind of remove that. And then the far blur, we can increase that. I think for this piece, we don't really need it. Let's have a look at the bloom. The bloom effect 
is going to make that reference image really bright, which again could be really cool because you could do something where you had something bright in the background uh, to kind of contrast your model. And that could be just a, an effect on in on its own. Let's just turn that bloom down. I kind of like the bloom effect in the background. So I might just keep that. Let's look at tone mapping. So I'm just going to lower the exposure, maybe lower the contrast slightly. Increase saturation, got chromatic aberration. So this will make it look a little bit like it's taken with a uh, with a camera with a slight distortion. We've got a vignette. And we've got a slight grain. You can also add some sharpness as well. Okay, so that pretty much summarizes how we can start modeling. So just experiment with it and take your time with it. You don't need to uh, blast through this. Just put some music on and enjoy the process. Let's have a look at kind of painting this. Let's look at some materials here if you wanted totally different material then you could do so uh, let's look at one of these reflective materials and there we go force paint that and that just about does it if you want to continue painting into this and you can always just change the colors Uh, you can use a totally different texture here. Choose what you wanted to paint and then just start painting into it. Okay, so just select the paint section, choose your color and then just start painting. Again, this might be something that you want to add on a new layer, just so you've got a new painted layer. And you might need to turn the symmetry off. Right, so just continue painting into it. I'm having too much fun here, as you can see. As soon as I go quiet, it's because I'm having too much fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just experiment with this. Enjoy the process and upload your work online. Get out there. Get your work out there. Excellent. I hope this helped. And I will see you in the next video. Okay, take care for now. Goodbye.